Okay, so today I want to talk about strict mode. Now, in JavaScript, there was a thing that was added a little while ago called strict mode, which is opposed to sloppy mode. Now, sloppy mode is not a real thing. It's just, it describes the way JavaScript is very flexible, especially for beginners. You can do lots of things and it'll let you get away with it. There's some weird syntax things that'll let you do, even though they're not technically proper. Now, if you add this string, use strict inside quotation marks with a semicolon up at the top of your file or at the top of your function. So inside of a function, if I'm writing, if I spell function correctly, and inside of here, I add use strict like this, then either the global scope or the function scope is going to be using this strict mode. And really what that means is it's going to force you to be a better programmer. Things that would silently fail or JavaScript would make assumptions about are no longer going to work. It's going to actually give you an error. So let's take a look at how we can leverage this and use it to our advantage to become better programmers. So first of all, if you've got use strict on, if I create a variable and the variable has never been declared before, so I never used var or let or const or anything, I just write the name of my variable. I forget that I haven't declared it already and I do this and I try to assign a value to it. If I run that code, now the file doesn't have to be called strict. That's just what I'm calling this file. There we go. So I got an error and that's what I want to happen. I want to get this reference error. I want it to say, hey, no, you're not allowed to do that. If you don't have strict mode, if you are in that default sloppy mode, see I comment this use strict out and we run it again there is no problem it will look at this and say okay well you didn't declare it but I'm assuming you meant to declare it so I'm going to declare this variable with var at the global scope so even if I'm inside of a function it will declare this as a variable at the global level I don't want that to happen if I didn't declare something maybe there's a reason maybe I misspelled the variable so if this was a misspelled variable, I would want to discover that. And that's why use strict is going to save us. Okay, so that's the first one. Um, if you declare variables using keywords, like not a number, undefined, things like that. Technically, we're not supposed to do this. And if you try to do this in the browser, this will fail. Uh, for some reason in node, save that, run it again. It lets me get away with this, but this will fail. This will give me a type error in the browser. Both of these, any keyword that you use like this in the browser is going to give me an error. Okay, moving on from that, uh, other silent failures. These ones are big. So a silent failure is when you ask it to do something and it doesn't give you back an error, but it didn't do the thing that you asked it to do. So let's take a look at some of those. Let's create an object. Inside my object, I'm going to have a property called A. I'll set to one, two, three. And then I'm going to create a property called uh, F and it's going to be, or let's say X. And it's a getter function. There we go. So I'm creating a property called X. This is the getter function to return the value of something. X is what it's going to look like. So a user would say, hey, inside of obj, what's the value of X? And this is the function that would run to get that value. Now, if I have a set X, I can pass in a value and then use that to say this dot a equals that value. So here I'm using my x property to get and set the value of here. I'll put another one in here. Let's say b is going to be zero and that'll be the thing that we're setting. There we go. So I have a getter and a setter for x. So when I do obj x, I'm calling the get. And when I assign something to it, 
when I do this, what I'm saying is take this 47 and put it into X by calling the set function. It will take that 47 in here and put it into this property B. So we're changing that. Okay, that's getters and setters. Now, if I don't have a setter, what I'm doing is I've created basically a read-only property, something that I can only retrieve the value. I can't set the value. But this is just going to silently fail. Oh, okay. Node is going to do this. In the browser, that's going to let me do it. But, sorry, I've got my strict mode on. That's why it's failing here. So if I take my strict mode off, and we'll run this again. There we go. There's the silent failure. Without strict mode on, even though I don't have that setter, it's going to let me do this line. So I'm going to go on with my code thinking that I've actually passed the value in here, but I haven't. So use strict protects me from my own stupidity. Like when I forget to comment out use strict. <laughs> there we go. So this is working. So I cannot do this. Um, without the setter function. And so that's going to give me back a uh, an error. Comment that one out. Now, if you define other properties, let's say object dot define property on obj, we'll create another property called C, and then we'll define its properties. We're going to say it has a value of four, five, six. And of the property descriptors, we're going to say that writable is set to false. This means I'm not allowed to change that value. It's sort of the same thing as doing this, creating a getter without a setter. I've said that, no, you cannot change the value here. Now we'll come up, we'll comment out, use strict, see what it looks like. If I do obj.c equals the new value, which will be 789, save it. We'll clear this out and run it again. No error. It silently fails. But if I try to console log obj.c, there's the 456, the original value. So it looked like it worked, but it didn't because it silently failed. And that's what use strict is protecting us from. When we turn on use strict and we run this code, now I get the actual error. So I can look and see what did I do wrong. Uh, one other silent failure from this. So I'll comment that out. That's another silent failure. If you take this and you can call, sorry, object.seal, there's a seal method. There is a freeze method. There is a prevent extensions method. I've done a video on that recently. I'll put the link to that down in the uh, the bottom in the comments, or rather the description. So if you do any of these things, what you're saying is, I can't add a property. I'm not allowed to make these changes. So I can't change them. I can't delete them. I'm sealing it to prevent, to protect it in the future. So if we try to delete obj dot, let's say C, or if we try to change the value of one of these, what we're doing is something that's going to cause an error. I cannot delete the property C because I've sealed this object to protect it, which otherwise would have just given me a silent failure. Okay, so whole bunch of silent failures, things that you can't do. Um, a few other things. When you create a function, let's create a function called dupe, short for duplicate. If I put a duplicate property name inside of here, and we don't have use strict turned on, so I'll remove that. We're back in sloppy mode. I've commented out all the other things that are causing errors. We run this again, no problem, even though I use the same variable here twice. 
if I turn on Ustrict, again, it's going to protect me. It's going to look at that and say, looks to me like you've made a typo. You've put something in there where you shouldn't have. So syntax error, duplicate parameter name, not allowed in this context. So this will give me a syntax error. Now I am allowed to use the same name twice for a function. So f1, there's a function, function f1. This is allowed, even if they're identical, or let's say I had two variables that I'm passing in, two parameters that I'm passing in. This is allowed in strict or sloppy mode. We are just overwriting the first function. So it's, it's kind of like we've done this. We've said, let f1 equal a function. And then after that, we've said f1 is equal to this new function, which is taking in two parameters, a and b. So this is what we've done here. So this is allowed. We don't have a problem, even in strict mode. Oh, sorry, I used let here. That is one thing to note. This is one of the reasons, there we go. So that's working with var here. One of the reasons that let and const were added in is to protect against things like this. So if you declare something with let and then you try to change it afterwards, redeclare it, like create a function with it again, or use let again, that is going to fail. So it's like it's already in strict mode with let and const. var uses the old variable rules. So this will work. This one, if I do this, and then F2, we're reassigning it. This one fails because we used let. Okay, so that is strict mode. Hopefully that makes uh, sense to you. I will leave a copy of all this code down in the description for you. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, but I encourage you to start using strict mode, even if you're using let and const. There are a number of places where it can save you from a very difficult to find error. As always, thanks for watching.